Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Farming Simulator 25. Uh, we're going to start by optimizing Windows. After that, we're going to look at your NVIDIA parameter. And at the end, we're going to look at all those parameters inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings. And we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're gonna start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processor. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode, honestly, is really, really good. Back then uh, with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now, honestly, just use balance. You will have better boost clock, longer boost clock. Uh, I did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance, and honestly, I'm getting better result with balance. So super important to do that. Another thing I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS. Super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also, make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest updates from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now let's go to the NVIDIA app. The first thing that I want to recommend, uh, I'm not a huge fan, honestly, of the um overlay so nvidia overlay i really recommend to deactivate this one sometimes it's causing issue like stuttering you're losing some fps with it so i really recommend to deactivate it also we're gonna go to the control panel i'm gonna show you some optimization that you can do so we're gonna go to the manage 3d setting first so the first thing that you should definitely activate it is your low latency mode make sure this one is at on Another thing that I recommend is your power management mode. This one, pretty much the same thing than the, the, the one from Windows. Make sure that you're using normal. Don't use the maximum performance. I'm getting also better boost clock, more FPS with it. And the last one is your shader cache size. By default, your cache will be a driver default like this. And normally it's 4 gig. Uh, I recommend to start with 10 if you don't have a lot of space on, on your computer. And if you have a lot of space, go with 100 gig. Honestly, it's a game changer for your cache size. Uh, you're going to struggle less with stuttering and also that your game need to recompile and stuff like that. If you install a lot of game, uh, this one can be very good for you. Now let's go to change resolution. The last one, really important to make sure that first of all, that you're selecting the uh, monitor, uh, that uh, first of all, you're using the native resolution of your monitor and also super important to have a proper refresh rate over there. Uh, by default, sometimes when you just change your monitor, it will be at 60 Hertz. Uh, so depending on the type of monitor that you buy, 144, 240, make sure that you're selecting this one. This option also, you can change it on Windows or your Radeon driver if you have a Radeon car. So no problem with that. The last one is your G-Sync. If you want to activate your G-Sync, really important to select the monitor. It needs to be compatible and you will enable over there. Uh, I'm not using G-Sync me. I always unlock my FPS because I want the lowest input lag. But if you don't like those steering line, definitely activate your G-Sync over there. So now let's go back to the game. So now inside of the game. So first of all, I want to mention uh, just play the game if you have stuttering. If you don't understand, you have like 200 FPS and you're lagging in the game. You have like a lot of stuttering. It's probably because you're building your shaders. So you, you need to make sure that you're playing the game. You visit 
your LAN uh, because you will see that after a certain amount of time, your game will improve, uh, the performance of the game will improve. That said, it's not the best optimized game that I saw. Uh, this game uh, is very rough to run. So I'm going to show you what are the best parameters that you can change to have the most of your FPS. Everybody here have probably different goals. Some people just want to play at 60. Some people just want like a lot of FPS because they have a high refresh rate monitor. So I'm going to show you what parameter to use. So first of all, uh, make sure that your hardware profile use medium. We're going to custom it after that. Screen resolution, make sure that you're playing native depending on your monitor. Uh, weird part for myself, by default, it was at 1080p and my monitor is not 1080p. So really important to look at this. I always deactivate my VSync in any game. It adds input lag and also you can use other technology like G-Sync and FreeSync if you want to synchronize your um, GPU with your monitor. Uh, uh, it will disappear your tiering if you have that. Frame rate limit, I just put at 240 because I have a 240 uh, Hertz monitor. Again, really depend on the type of computer that you have. If you want to play this game on a laptop at like 60 FPS, just lock your FPS at 60. Window mode, I play full screen, very important. Resolution, scaling, don't uh, downscale or upscale, stay at 100. Now let's go to advanced graphic. So medium, we're going to customize it a little bit. For object draw distance, I recommend to just play at 100 for everything. Uh, if you're struggling with your FPS, object draw distance and LOD distance will provide you most of your FPS. So you can drop at 50 over there and 50 over there and look at your FPS. When you go over 100, you will see that you will tank your FPS, but it really depends on the upscaling technique that you will run. If you're running the frame generation from FSR, probably you can go higher over there. So it really depends on what type of ad hardware that you have. Resolution scaling uh, 3D, I recommend to go uh, 100. Shader quality rate, you can stay at high. Screen space shading rate, screen space reflection, I recommend to go with off. A nice 6% boost over there. Same thing with shadow, deactivate this, another 3%. Ambient occlusion quality, I recommend to go with medium. Uh, less than that, the game looks very flat. So my recommendation, medium over there. Same thing with uh, atmosphere quality. Volumetric fog quality, this one tank your FPS like crazy. Uh, that's why I recommend to go with low with this one. Uh, you will see you are going to have a, like a nice 10% boost in your FPS. Cloud Shadow, I recommend to deactivate it. And those ones really depend on the amount of VRAM that you have. So if you have 6 gig and more VRAM, normally you can run very high, high and anisotropic 16x. If you have less than that, go high, low uh, 8x, sorry. And if you have like less than 3 gig of VRAM on your GPU, uh, go with something like 4x, 2x like this. So let's go back to I and 16. Light quality, I recommend to go with medium over there. Uh, you don't want to use the lens flare. You're going to save a little bit of your FPS over there. For shadow quality, shadow distance quality on your uh, light quality, I recommend to go with medium. Again, all those shadows and light, if you go too low, you will see that the game looks very flat. So that's why I recommend to go with medium. But if you're struggling with your FPS, definitely lower this. Soft shadow, you can go off and shadow map filtering, just go with low. After that, you have those um, field of view uh, parameter, but also those foliage shadows. Recommend to deactivate, deactivate the realistic beacon light. Uh, I'm playing default for medium. So, uh, so you have to understand if you uh, have an IRF field of view, you're going to see more large in front of you. You're going to render more stuff. So you're going to have less FPS. So don't go too crazy. So maybe finish the guide. Look at your FPS. If you have decent FPS, not too much shuddering. You can go higher with your field of view over there. So after that, max shadow light, just go with one. Just copy those uh, parameters over there. And the last one is post a process anti aliasing. This one is huge. I don't recommend to play native, honestly, with the TAA. Uh, you got it. It's crazy. The performance are really bad. So really important to use an upscaling technique. I want to mention something. So if you have an RTX card for thousand series or more recent, you don't have right now frame generation for DLSS. So if you activate your DLSS, you can't activate your frame generation. Honestly, I did a couple of tests. Uh, at quality, quality DLSS looks a lot better than FSR3 in this game, but you're limited. Uh, you don't have the frame generation. So you can expect 8 to 10% boost at quality for DLSS. So it really depends uh on how many fps that you want and you just want image quality if you just want the image quality and you have an nvidia card just go with dla uh 
uh, you will have a nice image quality and you're going to lose like 2% in your FPS. But for the majority of the people, I recommend to go with FSR3. Go with quality over there and activate your frame generation. For, with FSR3, you're going to have like a nice 8% boost at quality. But the main uh, goal here is use frame generation. You can expect 40% boost in your FPS. So those ones are huge. So if you have a Radeon card, if you have an NVIDIA card, even if you have an NVIDIA card with an RTX, you can't use this super resolution tree. So make sure this one is activated. For the sharpness, it's a question of preference. If you feel that your game is too blurry, just go higher. And if you feel that it looks too much like an Instagram filter, go lower. For me, I'm playing at 0.7 like this. And the last one is your DRS quality. I recommend to go with if you don't want uh, that, those dynamic shader rates. So this is pretty much it, guys. If you have any question about Farming Simulator 25, just come in the YouTube section. Post me your question. Also, uh, what type of computer that you have. So laptop, desktop, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.